trade tensions. China planning to retaliate with tariffs on $60 billion worth of U.S. goods. Joining us to discuss the tit for tat, President and Chief Investment Officer of Diversified Wealth Advisors, Dominic Tavella. What is the fallout, Dom? Um, the fallout is hopefully that uh, both sides at this point in the game have decided to kind of launch their missiles, but not as bad as it could have been. And so I think it's to get back to the negotiating table. But it's going to be long. It's going to be hard. This is not an easy road. But this is the first time with this tranche of tariffs that we're launching 10 percent initially going up to 25 percent on 200 billion dollars worth of Chinese imports. This is the first time that consumers definitely are going to feel this. Maybe not at Christmas time, but certainly uh, as the as we move on into next year, because these tariffs are on a large chunk of consumer goods coming in from China. I've said this in the past. We call them tariffs, but they really are taxes, right? The U.S. government is assessing a tax. The question is, who's going to pay this tax? Is it the manufacturer? Is it the importer? Or is it the person buying the product at the Walmart store? So sooner or later, some of these costs have to be passed on to the consumer. And ultimately, I think the consumer is going to pay some of this. I'm wondering how you view, and I guess this is investors generally um, evaluating this. Is it that uh, this is uh, really horrible, but uh, investors are giving Trump a little time to work it out? Or is it, is it more of a calculation that this tax is smaller than the, the big uh, tax cut enacted last year, and so net-net we're going to be okay. I'm just wondering in terms of expectations, what markets do if we find out this is not going to get resolved quickly. I, I think the market is going to react negatively. Uh, I, I really, I'm almost shocked that they haven't reacted negatively so far. Uh, being totally blunt about that one. Even yesterday's news, the, the market was up basically on that it wasn't going to be as bad. The inflation data coming out has kind of leveled off. And so that ties into what the Federal Reserve is going to do with interest rates. I think if it really starts to flow through, I think if consumer prices start to go higher and it affects the economy, investors are really, and the markets are really going to react negatively. Yeah, I'm really curious about this because I've been watching the polls and two-thirds of Americans out there believe that these are just negotiating strategies. That at the end of the day... Two-thirds. Two-thirds, 67 wow. percent say that. And and I think that it's, it's, it's fascinating to me because that means they think this is not going to be a long-term issue, that this mm -hmm. is going to be done, that everything's going to be better. Um, and I think the markets seem to reflect that as well. But now I'm wondering if that's going to shift as things start impacting our pocketbooks. I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, the clients that we speak to on a day-to-day -day basis are saying this is just his, his style of negotiation. At the end of the day, it's going to come into kind of some kind of settlement, much what happened with Mexico, right? But right now, Canada hasn't joined uh, the agreement. I know they're back to the table, but they still haven't signed on to the agreement. So they see this as a negotiating tactic. It will go south quickly if, if it turns into something. Jason, so I just to point out that tariffs are now hitting 11% of all U.S. imports in this country. So as that number gets bigger and roughly half the imports coming in from China, people are going to feel these price increases. Yeah, and I like, I'm one of those that likes what the president's doing. I think China's walked all over us for several decades. It, well, it may take months to play out, but what do you think is the time table for the president. Um, you mentioned the Christmas time and that sort of rush does he have until the first quarter of next year. How do you see that playing out? Yeah, so the scary part for me is that the China the Chinese government, the Chinese markets are really looking at these things in a much longer term timeline than we are, right? We're looking at the November elections. We're looking at two years from now, another presidential election. Uh, the Chinese government looks at these things in five and ten and hundred year cycles. They might literally sit back and go, you know what, we're just going to wait it out. If nothing else, at at least until the November election. But they're election. under more economic pressure than we are. I mean, our markets yes. are doing pretty well. So there the president a, has more latitude here. Right, the Chinese market at a roughly a four-year low. Yeah, they, their markets have had a really rough time of it. But on the other hand, uh, the average uh, Chinese citizen is not going to vote out yeah. their congressman <laughs> or their president. <laughs> so they can complain and they can uh, suffer. But I don't even the, think they can necessarily complain. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm trying to be politically <laughs> correct. So the, the point is that I think the Chinese are going to look at this is a much longer timeline than we're comfortable. Uh, upside, more upside than downside in the markets here, given everything we know about trade. I just want to point out that Canada is coming back to the table. Negotiations restart today. Christia Friedland, the foreign minister from Canada, kind of spoke, spoke a lot with just a T-shirt. <laughs> Be calm and negotiate NAFTA.
That was our keep calm and negotiate. And after was the T-shirt that she the, had. The on. truth here is they really weren't that far apart. They they really when you come, get into the nitty gritty, they just weren't really that far apart. So whether it was some <laughs> egos got in the way or some politics got in the way, I think Canada can come back into this and, and fine tune it and come into the deal. Yeah, uh, they just. Uh maybe lower the uh, barriers to U.S. milk going in there. The U.S. should agree to uh, keep the uh, dispute resolution mechanism so that uh, companies don't have to deal with every uh, uh, local uh, protectionist move. And, you know, the president, he ought to give on this if he gets what he wants in, a, in an after rewrite. There's yeah. no reason to rip up the uh, dispute resolution process. Uh, I, I think in the end, uh, I'm repeating myself, I apologize, but I think they will come into this. I think they will do some fine-tuning. I think that will get done. That'll be a big positive for the markets. Mexico and Canada are really important to our economy and the trading going back and forth. The EU still is out there. Obviously, China is huge out there. So we still have some potential storms on the horizon. I have a theory I will share with you later about these tariffs. Oh, good. And, yes. So I think it's a way to, I think the president in some way is focused on trying to reduce the deficit and, pay, and, and looking at the debt and that he's willing to hit these emerging markets with tax increases. Oh. And he doesn't see it as a direct hit on the U.S. consumer, that it's a way, it's a way to raise, raise revenue. It, and he it, talked, and I'm not talking well, out of David, my... You're, you're absolutely correct. He has talked about the revenue right. generating aspect of these tax And I've called him out on it, but I, I just... You are absolutely correct. He I has just, looked at that as a way to generate additional revenue uh, for the Treasury. Dom Tavella, good to see you I'm as here. always.